Hi and welcome to episode 15 of Understanding Dark Table. Uh, to my subscribers, my apologies for the drought over the last couple of weeks. Uh, just seemed to get busy with other things and just couldn't find the time to sit down and record. On top of that, I did need to kind of get my head around the combining of masks and I'm still not sure I've got it 100% but I think I've got it enough that I can explain it. So, I've got this image. It's not a brilliant image, it's just a reject, but I thought it was a good example image to use for this combination of drawn masks and parametric masks. So this was a sunrise shoot taken near where I live. And as you can see, we've got some ocean, we've got some dark rocks in the bottom left hand corner, and we've got the sun and the sky and all this other stuff going on. And as you can see from the history stack, I've not done a whole lot with this image. Uh, I applied a custom base curve which brought it up to there, I did a crop and a rotate and I did a bit of a contrast and in an earlier iteration I did also apply a lens correction just to straighten out that horizon but that's really neither here nor there as far as this tutorial goes so we won't bother. But what I am concerned about, now like I said this is a reject image, it's not something I'm going to do anything with. but. If it was an image I wanted to do something with, one of the areas that concerns me is just how dark the rocks are. And there's some of this sort of lighter coloured rock texture in here that it'd be nice to be able to bring out. So let's suppose we were going to use the shadows and highlights and we were going to boost the shadows to try and bring out some of that detail. Now that's great in and of itself, but it kind of washes out the entire image. So we want to limit this shadows and highlights module to only the rocks. And as we can see at the moment, we've got a little bit of a haloing effect down that side of the rocks where the dark pixels of the rocks meet the light pixels of the sky. It's created a bit of a halo. So we definitely don't want that in the finished image. So we'll go to a drawn and a parametric mask. Now in this combined masks drop down, you'll see there are four different options, exclusive, inclusive, exclusive and inverted, and inclusive and inverted. The default is always exclusive. And in this particular context, what is meant by exclusive is that, let's say you do a drawn mask first and that drawn mask captures a certain quantity of pixels within your image to create a mask, whatever you do next will exclude some of the pixels which were picked up in the first part of the process. Again, sounds complicated, probably easier to demonstrate. So what I will do is I'll grab my path tool and I will control click and I am deliberately going to go outside of the rocks here and I'm just going to come down through here, through here, control click to there, control click to there, right click and now we've got our path and as you can see we've made that halo look even worse now because of where the mask is active versus where the mask is not active. And if we turn our mask on, we can see that all of this part of the image has been selected, but we've picked up more than what we actually wanted because I deliberately went outside the rocks. And the reason I did that is because we are in exclusive mode, which means that whatever we do second is going to exclude some of what we've already picked up in our mask. So in this case, what we want to do is get rid of the mask in these lighter areas because most of the rock is quite dark. So I'm going to leave this channel selection on the lightness channel because it's purely a matter of lightness and darkness that's going to help us define this mask edge. And we're going to bring these down. Whoop. And then We'll turn that mask on so we can actually see what's going on. And that's done a pretty good job. And if I bring that down further, it'll start to push out 
this little bit of the mask that's happening on the clouds. We really don't want that to happen. But as I bring this further down, I am starting to lose the density of the mask down here. So we might just leave that about there. And oh, there we go. Now we've got rid of it from the clouds. That's good. I'll just bring that back to where that starts to creep back in. OK, about there. So there we go. That's pretty good. And if you look at that edge, like you can see how well that's tracking the edge of the rocks. That is just gorgeous. There's no way you would hand draw that mask. Not in a lifetime. Uh, you would go mad trying to do that by hand. So we click out of there and now we can turn this module on and off and see just how well that mask has limited itself to just the rocks. How good is that? Now, if that was what I wanted to do with the rocks, I'd be reasonably happy in that it's brought out some of that lighter colored detail. However, it's also made it look a little bit washed out. So what I would probably do then is go to something like Tone Curve and I'd use the same mask again, use the same shape as Shadows and Highlights. There it is there. Just kind of bring that into there just to, just to darken the dark bits but lighten up the mid-tone stuff. And that hasn't done too bad a job. Now, like I said, it's always going to be a throwaway image, uh, but that gives you an idea of how you would use the drawn and parametric masks together. Now, let's undo all that and go back to our shadows and highlights. And we decided that we wanted to you know, lift out our shadows. Let's now look at inclusive mode. So we've reset our image just compress that history stack so we can see that we've thrown away what we did before in the shadows and highlights module. We will now reintroduce our shadow lift, go back to drawn and parametric mask. And with the inclusive mode, we need to make sure that all of these channel polarities, that's this little icon to the right of the input and output sliders, that all of them, all 10 of them, because there are two for each of these five channels, the lightness channel, the A axis, the B axis, the chroma and the hue, all of them must be negative. Now, thankfully, you don't have to go through and manually click on all 10 of them. We've got this little icon here, invert all channels polarities, which will do all 10 of them for us. And in the process of doing that, it will also switch the combined masks drop down from exclusive to inclusive. So now we grab our path tool and this time I want to draw inside the edge of the rocks. So I'll control click, 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 click all the way around the edge of the rocks, control click, control click and right click and now we've got this mask. However, it's the opposite of what we wanted. So I'm just going to invert that. So now we just want to add these dark pixels at the edge of the rocks to our mask. So let's turn our mask on and let's start adding some dark pixels. starting to pick up a little bit of the water there, which I don't really want to do. So we might go something like that and turn that off. And now we can see that again, we have managed to pick up just our rocks and left our sky and our ocean alone. Not got any nasty haloing down the sides, and it's a wonderful thing. Now we can go ahead and do whatever other processing we wanted to do to, you know, increase the contrast in there to make the darker bits darker 
but still leave you know this mid-tone stuff lighter so that it was not quite as lost in shadow as it was initially again it's a crap image never going to do anything with it but hopefully that gives you an idea of how you can combine drawn masks and parametric masks into a complex mask that you could never have achieved you know trying to draw it by hand now i know i should really cover the other two modes but I still really don't have my head around it and I'm sure there's probably someone watching who has. Please feel free to sing out in the comments as to how you use those two modes. I'm sure I could work it out if I spent enough time with it, but to be honest, I don't even know that I'd ever use the inclusive mode, or at least not yet. Maybe I just don't understand it well enough yet. The day will come when I probably will be trying to do something in exclusive mode and suddenly go ah that's where inclusive mode would work and then i'll really understand it but for now that's gonna do it i'll see you in the next one